Да. Dear Chairman, уважаемые коллеги. Ladies and gentlemen, dear Chairman, I beg your pardon. I don't have much time to prepare the election. My election should have been first, but we were late uh, to come to the airport. So I would like to make a presentation. So my slides are in uh, Bulgarian language. They are not translated. I will make uh, this presentation and hopefully we will translate uh, it later. The efforts uh, of uh, all oncologists uh, from all over the world uh, are aimed uh, at improvement of uh, treatment uh, and better survival rate. If you have a good survival rate, you are on the right track. In order to have a good uh, survival rate, everything is important. Diagnostics, uh, treatment that can provide you with the best results possible. When we have such results, uh, it means that we are on the right track. As usually at every road or at every track, there are rules, like we know that you shouldn't cross the road on the red light, but sometimes uh, we don't understand how dangerous it is, and our team will try to show it to you. Uh, my presentation is called uh, The Effect of Integrated Treatment uh, uh, on Patients uh, with uh, Carcinomes. This study was uh, Organized in Bulgaria from 2009 to 2011, we needed uh, three years to assess surviving rate and process all the data. In Bulgaria, the data of um, breast cancer 27% uh, dot three. So it's almost one third uh, of all the women. The factor that has an impact uh, on surviving rate uh, is uh, early diagnostics, social and economic status of patients, and access to qualified oncological treatment. Uh, the right assessment of integrated treatment uh, in which should be based on standards and an ability of uh, healthcare institutions uh, to provide good quality treatment. The efforts uh, of the world uh, society are aimed uh, at the development of international standards uh, of uh, treating breast cancer. There are different indicators. In Bulgaria, the basic standards were developed in 1950s, made by the Institute of Oncology, and then uh, they were improved. The last version was published in 2014, and it complies with international standards and different uh, annexes. It shows uh, that there are certain variations between the standards in different countries uh, following the standards, but the variety rate is about 70 percent. I would like you to remember this figure. Our goal is uh, as follows to comply with the standards on survival rate in Bulgaria. The materials that we use was 1,505 patients. Uh, we treated them according to the standard of 2011, and treatment was uh, organized uh, at uh, the National Clinical uh, Medical Center. Um, 10,500 people were diagnosed. Um, we divided. We divided all the medical institutions dealing with the treatment of breast cancer into four types. The first group, National Center of Oncology, second, uh, University Hospitals, uh, hospitals, uh, integrated oncological centers based on the previous oncological centers, and also other healthcare institutions dealing with the same issue of concern. We try to comply with the standards, uh, and we developed eight chief indicators. First, Breast cancer at the early stage uh, 
where it is possible to keep the organs untreated, second mastectomy and treatment, third, um, more than uh, research of more than 10 uh, lymph nodes uh, during operation, five, uh, morphological verification of tumors, six, uh, uh, chemotherapy, and plus uh, after the operation, uh, then uh, hormone therapy, ER plus, PR plus, minus, and uh, eighth stage uh, targeted therapy, HER to plus, you know, uh, methods, uh, different uh, statistics, uh, coxal regression, um, hazard ratio, uh, so we took uh, the information from the 1st of January 2016. The results of our research uh, look like this. Please um, have a look at the slide. Uh, you can see percentage of people who come to the National Oncological Center, different hospitals. We analyzed the age of the patients and we found out that uh, it was almost the same from 50 to 60 years old, from 50 to 69, uh, and uh, it means uh, that uh, the institutions do not uh, choose between different age of patients. Second, morphological view of all the indicators, uh, carcinomes, uh, lobular carcinome. These are interesting types of uh, tumors uh, that are treated uh, in different medical centers, and some of them the percentage is uh, about 48 percent, and some others uh, they're different. As far as uh, grade is concerned, it's almost the same. Among all of them, Tino is an uh, early stage. So I beg your pardon. This center of oncology, uh, 32.9, 23, 24. Estrogen. Positive reception 76, 74, almost uh, the same as uh, progesterone. It's almost the same. HR2 receptions negative in the majority of cases, almost the same uh, and, uh, information in our statistics. And now we will track uh, the indicators that are related to different hospitals. Um, we'll find the information about all eight indicators. Um, organ saving surgery and uh, further radiation therapy at early stages, 72, 62% at the center of oncology. And in other institutions, it's like different figures, um, mastectomy and radiation therapy, 41% and so on, and uh, 10 lymph nodes and more, 78, 60, 86 and so on. Then the next indicator, 83, 90, morphological evidence uh, of the final results, uh, up to 100 percent uh, chemotherapy. In case of uh, positive uh, lymph nodes, uh, 84, 87, chemotherapy is 79, 80, 86, uh, targeted therapy 62 percent in the center of oncology, 40, 19 and 22 in other medical centers. At the end of the day, we found out that um, compliance with the standards at oncological centers, 75 percent in others, it's like 60 or 1, 67, 63, three year survival rate in the center of oncology, 92 percent in others, 80, 80 and 84 and risk of mortality. Um, in some of them, it is two times higher than in the center of oncology. When uh, we put all this data in the timetable, in the diagram, uh, we see a clear difference between different medical institutions. And when we assessed uh, re death risk, the center of uh, oncology 
had uh, two times less risk than university hospitals or any other medical institutions. And then we asked a question to ourselves. What place uh, do we occupy in the world? Uh, this uh, information, uh, um, we can compare this uh, information to the data from Germany, Belgium, and other countries. Uh, if uh, breast cancer is diagnosed at early stage uh, in Bulgaria, surviving rate is 45%, uh, 10 lymph nodes, 68.5, uh, uh, and so on, estrogen receptors, uh, 88 and 6, uh, about 80 in Germany. Uh, chemotherapy of leaf nodes, uh, 63, 80 to 90 and 100. Chemotherapy, hormone therapy, 74, 60 to 88. Uh, targeted treatment, 27.4. We have information only from Germany and also morphological diagnostics, 100%. And uh, then uh, um, the assessment of other stages, 76, 92, 83, 95. Uh, we have uh, the same task uh, to comply with the standards uh, of uh, European countries. Bulgaria is one of the members of uh, this process. Uh, we don't have any particular data about it. Conclusion shows uh, that uh, this level of compliance with uh, is quite high, 75.8. Uh, compliance uh, with uh, uh, the standards of integrated treatment of uh, breast cancer in the center of oncology is very high. Uh, the survival rate is quite high, 92. 2.1% uh, in general in Europe, the same uh, rate is about 80%. Uh, this uh, is average information. And finally, I would like to say everything we do, we do for the patients. And a patient feels good. If uh, he or she can live for a long time, it means that we do what we have to do and we are on the right way. Thank you very much for your attention. And I would like to say once again, do not cross the road on the red light because it's too dangerous. Thank you. Thank you. So you have a very good timing. So we have about a time for questions. Is there a question from the audience? OK, please. Mm. Thank you. I will ask a question in Russian. You will understand me. Do I understand it correctly that you do have standards uh, on treating um, breast cancer? Why don't all the hospitals comply with the standards? So you say that if they comply with the standards, surviving rate and quality of life is better. As far as I understood, targeted therapy was not done for every patient. It's a very good question indeed. Thank you very much. And the target of our presentation was to demonstrate uh, our position in the country and in the world. There are standards of treatment. Standards are standards, but they are not mandatory from legislative point of view. If they are obligatory from uh, mm, uh, legislative point of view is good because now we have only a good will. I asked the same question to Nadia Dmitrova yesterday and she said as the, the deputy of uh, the chairman of um, European Cancer Register, uh, she told me we need to develop uh, legislation and to make the compliance of standards uh, Mandatory. From my own experience, I would like to tell you that one year ago, I treated a lady from Bulgaria who had bacteria and studied it and uh, treated it in the USA. On that was a treatment on both uh, sides, and uh, I was surprised to read that uh, every action, medical action, had uh, a code like a certain number and a section. And I thought that it was uh, the kind of classification that I didn't know. But then I found out that it was a code uh, of uh, proceedings. For example, for proceedings, for example, if a patient claims that uh, a surgeon behaved uh, not correctly, they can 
check what is written in the documents and check whether the standard was followed. If yes, then it is fine. If they did not comply with the standards, uh, they will bring a doctor to a court. First of all, it's a, a big challenge uh, for a doctor from professional point of view. Any more questions? And, and the, <coughs> I, I may have a questions. And then you talk about the standards for the treatment. And uh, also you talk about if the doctor not follow the standard and they make it as a lawsuit. And uh, what is the percentage, do you know, the people or the patient and so the doctors, do you know? Because in, in, in China, the people, the patient, they don't believe the, the lawsuit. There's always violence in the clinic. So if you read the newspaper, a lot of the you know, violence in the hospital, in the clinic, the patient don't you know, satisfy and they, they fight with doctors. So I want to know, in your country, what is your percentage of the patient and also the doctor? Do you have? Right, right. And in Short America, I know a lot. Right, in America, you know, it's a very high percentage. So this is why in America, the doctor has a very high premier health in, the insurance to make sure the patient sue them, they have a lawyer to help them. Okay? What's your situation? Thank you very much for your question. When I said 78% uh, of our doctors follow standards, it means then both hospitals and doctors, the rest uh, just do not follow. When they don't follow standards, then uh, they make mistakes in treating patients. This is the wrong treatment. And uh, this is a fatal mistake. So uh, that's uh, the question whether you provide uh, chemotherapy or not, um, ray therapy or not, uh, uh, the volume of surgery, uh, whether it should be followed, the surgery should be followed by new adjuvant therapy, whether to accept uh, or reject patient from treatment. So because, uh, because we get all the data in the National Cancer Register whether uh, certain actions were done to the patients and there are details. So currently the, Bulgari uh, the Bulgarian system is unified and it uh, contains all of the information and there is a pilot group which allowed us to establish that system and uh, cancer was not um, um, on the uh, on the focus but in fact I recently was called as a witness it's a case by a woman uh, uh, and she had um, cancer diagnosed and uh, two breaths were, were uh, there was um, uh, they were removed, and uh, the post biopsy showed that there, the tumor is not malignant. So, and now we have to look into this case what happened uh, in reality and to make sure uh, that her rights are now observed. See, so, and why biopsy was not uh, swiftly changed, uh, uh, swiftly sent uh, for examination. Um, I understand the importance of standards, particularly if they're evidence-based and of following standards. Um, how rigidly, though, can they be enforced, given there may be extraneous circumstances except that, that crop up? For example, um, people that are old and frail may not be able to cope with the recommended practice, or they may be in a remote location where they can't travel because of other infirmity. Um, can you say anything about the rigidity or flexibility that the system needs to have in relation to standards? After year 1989, uh, we have so-called um, national um, 
financing of uh, health care. See, and there are conditions. These conditions were long-term and reimbursements were not happening fast. However, uh, this is one of the key regulation mechanisms, I mean, uh, reimbursements in health care in my country. We also had standards since 1950s. See, and I am from the generation which developed and then uh, disseminated these standards. We had uh, a very clear system of uh, medical institutions uh, with uh, clear delineated responsibilities, like this institution provides uh, uh, chemotherapy or this institution provides um, ray therapy. They are now uh, it's different because all uh, hospitals want to treat uh, oncological patients and now they are for the national health insurance system uh, insisted on having a mediator which is um, a healthcare committee which first identifies whether the patient meets the re requirements for oncological treatment and then there is a referral to the insti to the medical institution well about 70% as I said, um, follow standards, uh, and 30% is this uh, kind of problematic, but this is for the whole world. In uh, my country, it's 22%. Uh, it's a bit less. And uh, in my presentation, I had this idea both uh, to you and to us uh, to help us follow the rules because, because uh, it's a moral question, and uh, that's very uh, ethical, and our profession is to treat patients.